giving you the real from A to Z surrounding the Dallas Cowboys. News, updates, rumors, transactions, takes, and more. So strap up, Cowboys Nation, and start your day off with A to Z Sports. Live with Will Steele. Three, two, one. Here we go. Good morning, good people. Welcome to ADC Sports Live. We're streaming live on YouTube. And of course, I am your host, Will Skywalker Steel. Boom! We back, baby. We back. And coming up today. The Cowboys are back in action, apparently. They get on the board. Yes, indeed. They sign linebacker Eric Kendricks, and we are going to revisit our breakdown. That's right, revisit. Because if you've been here rocking with us about three or four weeks ago, you know this was a thing that could potentially happen. And we'll we'll talk about the reasons why. The easiest fit, I think, possible. Plus, we'll look at the linebacker room in general. And, of course, you guys... Obviously, you can call in today if you want. 351-999-3787 is the call in line, which I'm pretty sure y'all going to want to rap about this particular signing. And, and we're going to break it all down again. Now, if you've been here, if you've been here, a lot of this is going to be a bit repetitive, but that's OK. You know, that's that's why we do the homework and, and try to get in front of some things if we can. And we did on this one. Uh, but there's a there's some potential other signings that could, could happen here over the next coming days or a week or whatever that uh, may come out of left field. But this one in particular did not. Good morning, Bomb Squad. Bomb Squad! How we doing here? How we doing? Uh, <laughs> I, I guess this button has a different meaning now. Jokes. 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 Crazy few days. But uh, we got some football action to discuss and let's do that let's do that cowboys nation we're going to jump right into it no roundup no nothing we're going straight into this breakdown of one eric kendricks who again was signed yesterday by the dallas cowboys now it it wasn't a cut and dry signing i don't know what happened between him and the san francisco 49ers but the report came out that san fran was intending to Sign Eric Kendricks. So it was like, oh, well, there goes Eric Kendricks. He's off the board. It didn't happen. Uh, change of heart, money, I don't know. But we get the report that breaking news, hey, Eric Kendricks had a change of heart. He's coming to the Dallas Cowboys. And again, if you were here a few weeks ago, we kind of broke a lot of this down between Eric Kendricks and the relationship with Mike Zimmer and why obviously it made sense because you had a connection. But the issue with the connection was that Zim and Kendricks fell out at the end of their tenure. And if you guys remember the breakdown, we were talking about how, look, I just feel like Zim is the type of guy, he understood, hey, man, yeah, I, I definitely was a was an asshole. Let's be real. And I did that for good reasons. My intentions were good. And if anybody has, you know, an issue with it, I, I, will, I can reconcile that. I, we can talk. We can, we can figure it out. And I believe that they could. I feel like zim's a good dude um he just coaches a guy his guys hard and listening to a lot of people that played under zim they had that feeling like when they played with him he was like man this dude but then afterwards it's like you know what i appreciate you so getting Eric kendricks in here after the season he had last year which was a good season by the way again when we brought this up sometime in february there was a lot of pushback in the sense of ah this player's wash he's trash he's not and I'm like, I'm, I mean, not from what I saw. N- not from what I saw on film. I didn't believe Eric Kendricks was washed or was trash or, or, or any of that. Did he potentially lose some athleticism because he's 32? Sure. But what he possesses above the shoulders is what allows him to still be a productive player. Last year, again, 117 total tackles, three and a half sacks. And he, he was an impact player 
against the run. And a lot of people are saying, hey, well, Chargers defense, right? Was not a good defense. That's true. Ain't because of Eric Kendricks. No, sir. By the way, it's a former All-Pro, if you guys remember. We talked about the connection with Zimmer. He drafted him in Minnesota and, and took him to those heights. Now, was he the All-Pro in, in L.A.? Nah. Nah, he wasn't All-Pro in L.A., but he still was a damn good player. Again, he would easily have been the Cowboys' best linebacker, and it's not even remotely close. Like, I don't think it would it would have been a different stratosphere between him and Damone Clark and, and Marquise Bell. And one of the statistics I love to go look at with backers, you know, obviously you have to back it up with the film, is the average depth of tackle because that tells me when he's taking down a defender, whether it be in the pass game or the run game. And his was an almost a full yard better than one Damone Clark. At 3.1, which ranked in the top 20, and it was better than guys that we all know and love, C.J. Mosley, Nick Bolton, Patrick Queen, DeMario Davis, Roquan Smith, better than all of those guys. Well, did that translate to a good run defense? It did. It's not possible, Scott. Their defense was trash. It was, but their run defense wasn't. They were top 10 in EPA per play on early downs where the Cowboys were 23rd. So, for me, this is a... a impact significant signing for 2024 and that's all we were talking about when we were breaking down potential trade candidates at first was hey can i get a guy in here that can be an impact for 2024 we understand that eric well at least i don't know if everybody but i understand that eric kendricks is not an impact player for beyond one season they signed him for one year uh we don't know the details but it's a one-year deal which again that's all really i was looking for and at the time when we were talking about him it was for trade purposes and he had one year left on his deal five million bucks i doubt they're going to be paying him that if i had to guess i mean if the numbers came out y'all could let me know if i had to guess three million four million maybe uh, i doubt they hit that five million mark maybe he's still getting paid over there I, I don't know but um we know the threshold for the cowboys they really aren't trying to go above that four five million dollar threshold for probably any of these free agents which if we get a chance to talk about it today the other position maybe we will i might save it for tomorrow though but eric kendrick comes in right now and if you go look at the linebacker room he's your best linebacker right now in fact he's your most important linebacker because beyond the play with eric kendrick's is the know or the know-how of this scheme. We can debate on the legitimacy of, of what this front office really wants to do for 2024. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but the coaches and the players, they probably don't have, they don't share that same mindset. So these guys, they're going to go out there and try to play up to their potential and getting a guy like Eric Kendricks, I think, will help fast track that room. And not only that room, but potentially that front seven. Because with a guy like with a guy like Kendricks in a, a system that he's played in for like a decade, under a coach he's played under for a decade, plus Paul Gunther, who was a season, but Paul Gunther's back. A guy like Eric Kendricks can not only help a Damone Clark or Marvion Overshone to LVE, who I'm um, sorry, LVE, we're gonna talk about that as retirement potential. But a Damone Clark and a Marvion over showing the potential draft pick. But I think he can help your front seven. Whether they bring back Hankins or whether that's uh, Mozzie Smith or whoever they sign defensive tackle wise. Uh, shoot, he could help. He could help Micah if we if we keep it a bean. Micah's probably going to do some moonlighting at linebacker. If he doesn't, he still can help him. Hey, this is what coach is looking for when we call this. OK, this, I'm, I'm going to show you exactly how, because, you know, our, our coach is like 85 years old, so he can't really do it. This isn't Dan Quinn out there doing this is what he's looking for. Matter of fact, let me go pull up some film from back in Minnesota. This is exactly what he wants you to do. Hey, if if I if I if I loop around this way, I need you to just shoot the inside gap. I don't worry about the C gap. I got you because we've you know what I mean, these are the type of things he can say. No offense to Damone Clark or DeMarvion. They just haven't played enough 
to have that type of cachet to be like, hey, Micah, do this, or D-Law, do that, or uh, Hankins, do this, and Mozzie, do that. Damone is just trying to figure it out. Out of position, by the way. Eric Kendricks comes in right now, and, I mean, we'll see once we get to camp, once we get to OTAs and all that stuff. I think dude is going to be a not only a vocal leader of the locker room, obviously, but a physical leader as well. Dude is a heady player, and I think that's how he's going to get by for the next few years as a linebacker. And I know that sounds bad, right? Like, oh, get by. I, I still think he's a good player. But it's going to be his, his IQ that I think helps elevate the room. Now, what does that look like? Is it elevate the room to be a top? I'm not saying all of that. No. But Eric Kendricks, by default, makes this linebacker room better, I think, than it was. Now, you still have to add on to it. Just like I said weeks ago, uh, last month, when we were talking about adding Eric Kendricks, this doesn't stop you from drafting a guy. That's why I wanted him. Because if you draft a guy, he can actually help teach that young man. It doesn't stop you from, from a Cooper or a Gray or a Colson or or Wilson or or whomever you want. I think the, 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 it was the Hopper kid that they brought in. Whomever you want in the draft, it doesn't stop you from doing it. Also, it doesn't stop you from bringing in another guy if you want. The deal was probably a very cheap deal. Like I said, three, four million, five, maybe, maybe up to five, but three guaranteed type. So this does nothing. This does nothing in regards to finishing the position. Damone goes into year three after a first, his first full year as a starter. He's starting to get some, you know, repetition up under his resume. And he, so he can learn from Eric Kendricks. He goes, I think. He slides back to being an outside linebacker. DeMarvel Overshone is going to push him. We talked about Demo last week. Demo's coming off the ACL. I just, uh, just me personally, I I don't know that I'm going to just blindly think that DeMarvion Overshone is going to come back and be, you know, better than what he was in preseason. And you could say, I'm counting on Demo. I think it's just blind optimism. And we get, look, I, I get there's fans like, like that. There's Homer is, is, is kind of a bit of a derogatory statement now, but it is what it is. It's more of like a Homer thought. Hey, the Demo tore his ACL. We good to go. Even though we've seen all these ACL things, right? And it's not like Demo is a guy that was in the league for four or five years, an all pro at some point or something. And nah, he's, he was a rookie. Towards ACL is doing the recovery, come come back in camp, you know, behind the eight ball a little bit. So I'm looking at Demo as whatever you can get from him, man, is a plus. Think, uh, well, actually, that second season of Jalen was a lot of tackles, but just just whatever you can get from him is a plus. So Demo doesn't stop me from drafting. Demone doesn't stop me from drafting. Eric Kendrick doesn't stop me from drafting or adding. And then LVE, very likely, he is going to retire. And if he doesn't, the Cowboys should be out on him anyway. Let's be real. There's no way you bring him back. Uh, hey, Ron, look over. You say you want his average depth of tackle again? 3.1 yards. That's top 10 in the National Football League. And why? Do you, or I'm sorry, top 20 in the National Football League last year. And, and, and why? was it that good and has and it's been that good because again he is a a heady player uh we played this last time we talked about him take a listen to eric kendrick's just talking to uh, i think it was baldy i think it was his last year in in minnesota or 2021 actually this is 2021 season he's just talking about what he what he's singing out there and how he's thinking and then you can kind of see some film at the breaking down R really good clip here each other like even though yeah, we're late we're messed up right here right we get over late me and ab are pretty much stacked in the same gap but the important thing is you know to just calm down okay what's the what's the objective of the of the game is to track the ball carrier yeah and i'm just like okay where's where's he gonna go he's gonna go to the right and i just kind of guess it over there yeah i don't think you're guessing that to me is the stuff that fascinates me because 99 percent of the guys in the league if you're set up you they can do the right thing. Yeah, you have a chance. But what happens is when it gets changed, and now all of a sudden you're going, well, I could be this gap or this gap. And to be able to settle down and go, okay, AB took that gap. 
I naturally will take mm -hmm. this. But to think that fast and play the game that fast, I believe is, is a rare concept that very few guys could do with things going 100 miles an hour like that. He is, you know, you can't, you can't panic. I don't just sprint over there. You know, I know where I'm supposed to be, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. But at the same time, I thought he was gonna get the handoff and go the other way, so I'm not gonna just rush over there if I don't have to. The one one-on-one with Eric Kendricks, that one was won by the linebacker. So naturally on that, he tries to shift late. So naturally, let's, okay, you're late. So normally you guys are just this gonna stay right in mm -hmm. the spot that you're left and, in and you're just right. gonna make just up play. for the other they guy. They may play each other's position, take right. each other's assignment. The offenses nowadays, man, these these rockets, these these motions, these shifts before pre-snap, yeah. they're all trying to get you to mess up. They want you to take the cheese. They want someone to get out of their gap. They wanna they want their the numbers to be in their favor. My objective is to find the ball. You know, obviously we have gaps, we have assignments, we have jobs to do, but I wanna be a middle linebacker if I couldn't find the ball as, as well as I did, you know. At the end of the day, that's his block and tackle. Eric Kendricks is playing solid foot. That part he talked about with, with the basically he's talking about the eye candy. That part to me is huge because that's something that our linebackers have struggled with since Rob Marinelli was here. Um, and it's because through Rob Marinelli all the way up to Dan Quinn, it's just our backers, let's be real, since, L, not LV, since um, Sean Lee left, the the instincts and, and, and the, the IQ hasn't been as high. That's no disrespect to LV. LV can see it, but he ain't Sean Lee and he ain't Eric Kendrick. He can see it. You just can't get there but these guys have have been taught in my opinion to be ultra aggressive and you see it yeah if we're flying around the over pursue those those cutbacks and the eye candy the play action and it happens where i'm not saying it doesn't happen to eric kendricks because this is the league like, like i said i said this a lot linebackers is, is tough on these dudes now because because of all that eye candy but he understands that, and and I think if you go watch his film, you see a lot of that. In a sense, um, where are we at here? Let me bring up the film again. We let that roll a little bit. In a sense, he's a, a patient guy. But don't mistake in his his patience for being slow, if that makes sense. Because I often say this a lot about the safety position. I can care less if you run a four three at the safety position, because nine times out of ten, unless you're the Dan Quinn defense and Cowboys, you're playing a half of the field, sometimes a quarter. So I just need you to see it. And if you see it, then your natural athleticism will get you there, whether you run a 4-3 or a 4-5 or a 4-6. Not, not four, I don't want to go higher than that, but you know what I mean? And Eric is probably not a an, an A-plus a athlete anymore, but he's an A-plus football IQ guy, and that's going to get him to the ball. I haven't mentioned at all about his pass defense because we understand our, our Achilles Hill has been run defense, but Eric Kendricks has been one of the best pass uh, defending linebackers in the league with a ton of pass breakups, a ton of interceptions. You know, one of his more famous ones against the Cowboys, 2019 against, you know, the Vikings, wild game. That was kind of the game where I started looking at Keller Moore a little sideways there. Um, was a third down or something like that. They, they send out... Ezekiel Elliott on an option route. He takes the out. Eric Kendricks gets a massive pass breakup. Fourth down, incomplete, game over, essentially. But Eric Kendricks, y'all. Got him. We f***ing got him. <laughs> we got him. We got him. All right, let's get a couple calls, talk some more about Eric Kendricks and uh, whatever else is on your mind. Got Cowboy Mike on the horn. What's good, Cowboy Mike? What's good with you, man? Good How you morning. Feeling? Good morning. Good morning. Hey, man. Uh, so Kendricks has signed with San Francisco. I never heard anything about that. Allegedly, he signed with, Allegedly. with San Francisco yeah, so. because obviously he didn't, right? But that was the report that that he was he was agreeing on terms with San Fran, and I don't know what happened there. Uh, pfft. Maybe they were saying you're going to come off the bench. I, I, maybe they have a change of heart on Greenlaw. I heard some reports they could potentially move on from Greenlaw. So so maybe Eric was like, you know what? I'll go play next to Man, I'm going to go yeah. mention uh, Greenlaw because that's the freakiest injury of all time. This dude tripped over the hash and tore, they, tore everything up, did he? You talking about Greenlaw? Yeah. Yeah. That, so if I had to guess, maybe he his people were told, hey, Greenlaw – 
Greenlaw's not going to play for a while. You know, you can play next to uh, Fred Warner, and, and, and then they may move on from Greenlaw, and maybe he said, cool, I'll do that. And then they, maybe they say, you know what? They're out on that. They'll get a natural will. I, I don't know. Well, maybe we'll hear, hear about it uh, over the coming days. Man, does this allow us to do something else with Damone Clark? Like yeah, move, move him, him to him. out. Yes, move him to Will. Move. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I feel like maybe he can perform better if he's just running down stuff. Because in the middle he's not physical enough. Yeah, I don't think he's a he's a he's a natural and he wasn't though. Remember, <clears throat> I thought maybe he has the potential to be, but he 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 didn't. So he came in and it was LVE's job. LVE got hurt. They moved him in the middle when LVE and Barr got hurt. So he had to, you know, cover for that. Like, right when he came back from messing up his back in his rookie year. So he was playing kind of out of position, but you saw the ability, right? Year two, it's him and LVE. You put them on, you know, next to LVE in almost a month into the season. Boom. He's down. Now Damone go yeah, right back so, to the middle. So yeah, he's not really a he's a will. And, and maybe he'll get the chance to stick at Will all year with Eric Kendrick playing. Yeah, or, you're right though, because or he might be an LB three. And he came back, you know, Clark was running down stuff and L V E was, you know, doing what he could in the middle. Yeah, yeah. And and look, with Damone, I know a lot a lot of people are sour on Damone. I think he has a place on the team. I just think I, I would look for an upgrade for sure. But if Damone Clark is your right. LB3, he's, he's doing some rotational things. He's still uber athletic, you know, new coaching. I do think the new coaching is going to help Damone. I think he'll his his talents will be able to shine a little bit better under Gunther and uh, Zimmer. Oh. But, I mean, if I oh, get Eric Kendricks. On that. Yeah. Because I think Zimmer has the ability to, to break some guys down and they may not make it. I mean, as far as stopping this, because he's gonna get in your grill, man. If you're not doing right, I mean, we all seen the highlight of him on the sideline. Get your shit together. Sure, I mean, but Zimmer, Zimmer is a—he's not just yelling, scream at you on the field. He's—he he knows how to motivate you as well, and he'll straight up tell you, "Hey, man, I want the best for you, and that's why I'm hard on you." So, if you if you fold like that, like a guy like Demone Clark, I don't I don't see a guy like Demone Clark fold in that sense. Uh, I think he'll again. I think he'll get the best out of Demon, whether that be as an LB two or LB three. But I, I I know it's a popular thing that oh well, you know Zimmer's coming in. All these people are going to fold and they're going to get rid of him. I don't see it see it that way. If anybody's folding, it probably be bottom of the roster guys that you know already pissy that they can't make the team. And I'm the fifty eighth guy. You know what? Screw Zimmer yelling at me. I'll go try to make the team over there with Dan Quinn. <laughs> Hey, and we still got – hey, my mom back in the day, man, they used to play spades, and she would not buy a new deck of cards. I'm like, Mama, this deck of cards is floppy. <laughs> but we still got that joker, that floppy joker, overshown. I mean, we don't – I mean, we He's can't a wild card. that. He's a wild card. He's a wild card. Yeah. yeah. But just that, that, let's just be on the positive side. Say he does come in, and he's a little bit more than holds his own. Does that solidify our linebacker, our linebacker core with Kendrick? We still got Clark. I mean, we draft somebody. Say we get the guy from NC State. Cool. Solid. Will's boy. Hey. You know, we'll see, you know that guy's gonna fall because he's injury prone. <laughs> Uh yeah, I mean, listen. You, you, given your example, hell yeah, your linebacker core is solidified. If you if you tell me you get Peyton Wilson, uh, you said Demo is you know back to the ACL doesn't hamper him and you got Kendricks and you know and Clark yeah I, I like I like the linebacker room I like the linebacker room like I like it pretty good for 2024 but I really love the future of the linebacker room and I got one more thing man sure. then I'll, I'll take it off the air okay has Zimmer and Will McClay ever worked together Denver is that what you said Will oh McClay. Zimmer you said Zimmer yeah, and Will McClay. Have they ever no, collabed on anything? Because I feel like them two, man. You mean like, you know, do they have a prior work working history in Dallas? Yes, sir. I do not believe so, no. Uh, Will McClay got here, like, I think around like 09, y'all, or something like that, when he was coaching the – he was like the, the the general manager, head coach of the Dallas Desperados or something, and, and, and I think Zim was long gone. And I would – I know Zim this, was long man, gone the by Cowboy him. Nation. 
I'm going I'm to come with the uh, Vice President Aaron Rodgers quote. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> so y'all be easy, man. Uh, y'all man. Cowboy, thank you. Appreciate you, Cowboy Mike. Aaron Rodgers running for Vice President. Possibly is crazy. Wait. I did not have that on my, my calendar. No, sir. Yeah, I, I, I think Zim is going to get the best out of these guys, man. And and maybe the, maybe not out of everybody, you know? I'm not saying this dude is a, is a miracle worker. But between Kendricks and Demo, whatever linebacker they draft, Clark, I think you're going to get two to three guys that, that you can feel good about week in, week out. Now, we ain't done, you know? What I don't like is Cowboys media that's throwing out... Yeah, you're happy now. Like, relax, okay? You ain't, you ain't gotta be. You ain't gotta patronize Cowboys Nation like that. Relax, okay? They 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 did the bare minimum, and we are happy about that, right? Yeah, yeah, we are. They they signed Eric Kendricks. We needed that, it, it, but it ain't, we ain't done yet. And don't act like, you know, Cowboy fans wanting the Cowboys to do something during this time period to improve their team is some wild thought. You know what I mean? especially when they were the last team to do something. So we'll see what happens today. We'll see what happens tomorrow. There was there was more reports that went on yesterday. Again, I'm, I'm tempted to save that for tomorrow to break down uh, more of that, but you may get some signings today. So we'll see what happens. Uh, if you go look at the history over the last three seasons of when the Cowboys, I was working on something just, just to see when the Cowboys were, were signing these dudes because it, what was happening up until yesterday was normal in a sense, but also over the last three years, a little bit abnormal. Like It was normal in a sense the Cowboys don't partake in signing big name free agents. We get that. But Dallas quite literally was doing nothing for, for three, four days. And I say three, four days because I go back right before free agency starts. If you go look at the previous years, they you know, just last year, they re-signed... Uh, who was it? Wilson before this whole thing started and we're into free agency. They traded for uh, Gilmore. They brought back some of their own. I think LVE was a part of that. So they were doing some things. They weren't just doing nothing. The year before that, they went out and they signed, uh, I think it was Fowler and Washington in the first two days. Nobody that you know, to move the needle, but they were doing something. In 2021, they brought back Noah Brown, they re-signed Jordan Lewis. Uh, they, they signed Ty Nanseki. Then a couple days later, they went on a crazy spree and signed like seven or eight more guys over the next three or four days. So they were more active than what they were the past this past week. So it was a little bit like, all right, look, I know y'all don't do anything significant, but you quite literally are doing nothing. So it was like, hey, man, hey, what's going on here? So Kendricks does at least you know, pump something back into a position of need. And this was, in my opinion, one of the easiest fits for the Cowboys because he's going to fit their criteria and he fits a need. And obviously, the relationship he has with Mike Zimmer. Good morning, Nacho. Well, man, Scott, how you doing? Good morning, good morning. Fantastic, are you? Um, uh, I'm doing, man, I'm doing. Uh, but no, um, Thank you for taking my call this morning. Um, no, absolutely. You know, I, I um, alluding to everything we're talking about, you know, this morning, you know, uh, having that acquisition of, of Hendricks, you know, you know, as a fan, you, you always have a few players in mind. Okay, you know what? Yeah. I, you know, kind of like a wish list, I guess, you know. He was one of mine, you know. Um, he was one of mine because I just feel that his attention to detail and, and, and just being a very savvy uh, linebacker and uh, kind of like you know like a tackling machine, somebody that you know we 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 need somebody like that in the middle of our defense and and acquiring him and how it happened with this whole transaction of obviously you know Monday the week started with all these names going everywhere and of course not until yesterday what right wasn't it the official signing where everything becomes official type of thing. And maybe that's what happened, is that maybe the Niners had already strong offer and 
he was heading that way, you know, maybe to sh- shore up their defense with the injury to Greenlaw. And then, I don't know, I'm hearing some rumors that maybe Mike Zimmer got on the phone. And, hey, if that's what happened, so be uh, it. Yeah, however uh, it happened, he's up- here now, right? Absolutely, right, absolutely. And, and so I love Kendricks. Uh, I think he could be a mentor to these young linebackers, uh, and and he can run. You know, he's going to be that. You know, he was, he was, uh, if I remember correctly, he was the captain uh, with the Charger defense there. So he's one of those guys that, uh, without a doubt, uh, at least some excitement to Cowboys fan base, right? Um, and maybe I hope you're right uh, that we're not done. Um, Here's a few names that I'm thinking if we're not done. And what do you think? Um, I'm thinking, heck, Devin White is still out there. DJ Reader, D Tackle, uh, still out <laughs> you there. You can get rid of Don't even. Um, DJ Reader is going to be way out your price range, brother. But, but hey, listen, you know, a lot of the, you know, you know we're already on Thursday. You, you, you know how that goes. You know, a lot of the big name, a lot of the big money. You know, it's that first week, so I'm not. Hey, I'm hoping. You know, you never know. Uh, I do know. You know, <laughs> Nacho. How long uh, you been a fan, bro? Like, how long uh, you been watching this show? Uh, I, I try to help y'all out by setting you up. I, I, you know exactly. Know. You think DJ Reader coming to play for a million bucks, two million bucks? Uh, no. Come on, man. Well, it, you know, you know, it 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 is un- it is unfortunate to see that our. Yeah, we we just have. You know what? I'll say this. A, I'll say a, this. A I'll say this, uh, Nacho. I hope you're right. That's I. I would love to believe. I would love to be uh, wrong on DJ Reed. Um, Come on. Um, I sure hope so. Right. And it, well, it, you know the thing is, is is this. Let me ask you this question. Okay, uh, there could be many ways that we can go about it. Right. We we could say we could restructure uh, Diggs. We could restructure Steel. We could give CD Lamb his money. And we could open up all this room and cap space so we can go out and, and, and get a reader, for example, right? Nacho. With with that in mind, knowing that <laughs> Nacho. Hear me out, guys. Hear me out. <laughs> no, knowing that, no, no, knowing that this is something that we can do, yeah. but yet we're not doing, and maybe what we're not telling the fan base, but but we're already doing, whether we're resetting, rebuilding, whatever you want to call it, mm. that's the frustrating part, you know, because. Yeah, I mean, you knew this right. free agency market's coming, and you weren't right ready. You were not ready, right? Yeah, I, I, listen, bro. The, 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 the Federal Reserve can say, hey, Jerry, NFL, we're going to give the Cowboys unlimited cap space. And these fools will not use it. Right, that, 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 that is just their MO, you know? And look, I get it. You don't got to. You don't gotta spend a hundred, two hundred million dollars on one, two players in free agency, but I mean, boy, they, 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 they've, they've teetered this line of being cheap and being good enough, and they're, they're not going to go away from it until it really blows up in their face, and they're like five and eleven, three years in a row or something, you know. But right now, they're, 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 the odds of them making all those moves to free up money and then using that money to spend on big, big name or big time guys, they would have did that already. Nacho, they would have done it. That's for uh, I know, and I know, and and, and you know, you see me trying to be optimistic and all that. But I'll leave you with this: um, if you had if if we had maybe one or two more late, you know, uh, 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 free agents that we we might need or, or things that you might be hearing, who do, who do you, who do you think? We oh, might they're not support? done. No, no, no doubt about of, no, no, no doubt about of what's left. Of what's left. Yeah, okay. they're not. Okay. They're not done. That's the thing. Like. Wh- when we're all frustrated about them making moves or, or lack thereof making moves, sure. to me it's more about the guys that float in that kind of tier two price range that they just are, are, are out, all out off, all out on. Uh, they like to sift around a tier four or five situation where it's going to cost you close to the vet minimum. Okay. So, you know, they're not done. They're going to probably sign a defensive tackle, uh, okay. a running back. Pop, poss- I mean, they have to sign another corner. I, there's just, I mean, there's no way. I mean, you're gonna go into the into the draft with, without you know Jay Lou or Gilmore coming back. I feel like they're gonna sign one of those oh, guys. Oh my god! Uh, the 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 center I think is done. I think they all the centers are gone. Maybe they maybe they signed a you know veteran left tackle at some point, but 
I, I don't get I, I don't get a sense that they're in the market for a whole bunch of uh, tier two guys. Which there's some some still out there. But I'll tell you this. Okay. I, I'd just be happy at this point if they got back Tyron Smith and Stephon Gilmore. Like, just bring those dudes you know back, what? man, you know and, and bro, that would be good. That I can live with the rest. That, that, I agree. And I for agree. real, that, and all Let's you're talk. doing is just, right? you're just going back to what you were. And, that, and we've had this conversation for years. The, the problem, and, and look, I appreciate this signing because you needed a linebacker. But once again, Cowboys Nation, for those that tune in on the daily, that, that know what I'm about to say here, this front office year after year continue to be reactive so yes i'm going to clap it up for you for getting kendrick because you needed it but you needed it last year during the season and you had an opportunity kind of cost right? you a you little bit right it kind of cost you a little bit you got to the playoffs you ain't got no linebackers and they said, well, damn it, we ain't got no linebackers, man. Let's go out and get one, and what's going to happen? We're going to be like, oh, my God, that's what's up. We got the line. Well, yeah, we need the linebacker. But guess what? You didn't necessarily elevate yourself. You just kind of put yourself where you need it to be. So if they bring back Tyron, if they bring back Gilmore, I ain't going to lie to you. I would be happy because, damn it, we got major holes there. But you're really not elevating. You're just right back where you were. So... And hell, maybe those will help you get to eleven and six, twelve and five again. But I'm I'm more so looking to not just be back where we were, but potentially make moves to to ascend. A lot of paper going on over there, uh, hey, Nacho. But appreciate you calling, big dog. No, I know. I'm moving. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Have a my bad. You too. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I love the love the signing, but. Let's, let's be real. And, and, that's, and if we being really real, we still aren't back to where we were. In my opinion. Like, 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 we're not done. We, we still got a few days. I mean, we technically got until training camp. But um, we got a long way to go between now and then. I, I just... Feels like Groundhog Day, you know? Where, yeah, they're going to probably sign a DT. They're probably going to sign a linebacker. They're probably going to sign a corner. Um... But are they going to be guys that move the needle for you past where you were previously? And if you don't bring back Tyron Smith, let's just keep it real, man. Your, 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 your line is not as good. So now I need my coaching to be better or I need my players to be better around that. And right now you have one real running back. And he's miniature. <laughs> Thoughts on Mozzie at linebacker. I thought I saw something the other day where uh, they talked about Mozzie. I think it was Brian who said uh, that Mozzie putting weight. I'm going to put weight back on Mozzie. Well, no, I, I hope so. And get him back up to 315 at the least. You know, and, and I think Zim will help those guys out. Do you mean Chuma as a backup left tackle? Who's Crumb? I'm trying to save that position for tomorrow, but it's very possible. There's a possibility a couple of these players I got in mind might be gone by tomorrow. But hey, we in off season. Uh, we here five days a week. Got to make sure we got some content for y'all. All right, we got two more here. Get to some supers. D Shift, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Just trying to get get these calls in before I get back on break, man. Uh oh. I got to be away from the nation, bro. So just getting it in while I right. can, man, and uh, just reaching out to you, bro. Uh, I hear you, man. Sometimes man, you got to take a break sometimes, bro. Yeah, man. It's not even so much. It's just, you know, work, man. I always mm. had the luxury to be up in the morning and be with gotcha, you grinding. Gotcha. But uh, but I'll, I'll be here when I can get here, man. But, uh, no, nah, I, mean, I want to triple down on what you're saying, man. Uh, my biggest fear, uh, and, and, you know, shout out to the uh, – the what's that? The, the flag, flag staff, and whatever the little media nation, them, or the flagship, them. Shouts out to them, bro. Cause uh, shouts out to man, yeah. Shouts out to them, man, for feeling like they can just in our, you know, every time the Cowboys do a little something, you know, they can just kind of put their thumb on their nose and be like, you know, basically tell us to calm down when we knew exactly like you're saying, man. We knew 
that they're going to sit up here, man, and, oh, and, yeah, and the, fill the hole. The, the, the local media. Yeah, the local media always on some, you're happy now, you're good, but you want a cookie. Like, come on, man, stop it. Stop it. We knew they were going to fill the hole. I, you know, I understand they got the, they got to kind of beef with y'all, man, because y'all the truth, and, you know, they, they, they scared of Jerry Jones, but, um, so they got to, you know, b- bullies got to kind of take out their aggression somewhere, but man, uh, nah, bro, like, they're going to fill those holes, they're, they're going to fill the holes, the Cowboys are going to, they're going to get a line linebacker, they're going to get a running back, they might get a, a, a DT, but our biggest thing is what, Scott, they, we're bringing back the same team. Like, I can already tell you that the running back position next year is going to be a problem, regardless of who you draft in, because you can't put that all on a rookie. And, you know, rookies get hurt. You know, that's, that's just kind of the welcome to the NFL thing. So, I mean, you look at a Brees Hall, right? Like, he took off running with the Jets, and then they, you know, they, they lost him. And, um, I mean, it don't happen for every rookie, but you know what I'm saying, man. Like, you yeah, can't put all that weight. You can't, and, and, and I got I, I got y'all tomorrow. I, I promise y'all, even if even if these guys get, get taken today, I got y'all tomorrow on, on some options. And uh, not it's not a Catboy criteria type of show. It's more so I'm going to give you a, an actual backfield that I think could be a, a solid backfield given the situation, but they have to take the – There we go. They have to take the approach solid. of – yeah, right. They have to take the approach of, hey, this is this is a, a committee approach. This is a, a situation we're going to use all these backs. Because if they do it that way, I, I think they can still be, again, solid. But um, solid. It, it starts it starts with, again, the how. It starts with them getting better, blocking up front, and then, you know, one team. But we did that to, last to year, Scott. We, we, we put ourselves back up to solid. You know, you do that. We do that every I year. Mean, we get into a deficit. I don't agree. We pull back to solid. I think their philosophy was worse count, than solid, bro. I think the philosophy was worse. If if what if what I'm going to be presenting is is it happens, I think it's it, it it's a shift in the philosophy. That I think they they were arrogant last year, or maybe there was where my button. Maybe there was maybe there's some politics because they they just said okay, we franchise tag UTP, and we we'll just bring Rico Dowdle as RB two and a fullback, and and they just ran but with TP. They let go of Cooper as well. Cooper don't play running back. I'm just you know, talking about so running backs, bro. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm telling you, but I'm saying, like, you, you say last year they're arrogant. They were arrogant the year before, and they're, oh, yeah. they're following the same trend. They're, yeah, they're sure. just – they're arrogant. Well, well – And the, I, I don't know where the arrogance comes from. But remember remember what they also are. They're also reactive. You know, so they let like, go sure. Cooper, and what they do, went and traded for Cooks. Uh, they, 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 they screwed the pooch in the running back room last year, you know, relying solely mostly on Tony Pollard, which is not his fault. And may, and the the idea this year is that they're gonna go back to a duo approach, which again I think that's the obvious thing. But so I could see them going back to a duo approach, but we, we got to see it to believe it. Man, look, you bring that same offensive line, even if you draft a first round pick, you're you're bringing back a, I say a more questionable running back room. Your defensive line lost depth. Like, all right, cool, we we got Kendricks, but. I mean, where there's oh, they got a whole lot more problem. to do. Yeah, they ain't done. They, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. But even when, once once we draft, man, I'm just saying, I'm not looking at. I mean, again, we'll get to the off season and we'll get that flash player and see, like, yeah, that's why the Cowboys don't don't you know pay that much money in free agency. They're geniuses, and then we back in uh back in division division around Fair. loss because we ain't got enough guys. Fair. So man, Fair. appreciate your job, bro. Mm-hmm. Take it easy, Eat. dog. Yes, sir. Eat. They. That's fair, you know. But if you if you listen to my show, it ain't it ain't again, it ain't that what they do does not keep them competitive. And it ain't just my show. A lot of people say this. Yeah, the Cowboys still gonna be probably competitive. Maybe. I mean they will be if, if four don't get hurt. But there's a there's a lot more. The holes this year are a little different than the previous years, I think. A little bit. So if they do get back to breaking even, you're gonna come out and be competitive. You'll get the aha. See, yeah, they didn't need to go. Sp- yeah, they're the twelve and five again. So then we get to the playoffs and say, hey, twelve and five. But how do we get here? How do we get here? That'll lead me to whatever shred of confidence that I may have in the playoffs. Because let's just be completely real. Um, pump. Banging on my chest, going into the playoffs. Come on, man. 
you're not. How do we get there? And that's even if we go 12 and 5. Long way to go between now and then. We'll see. All right, Magic City. Send us what out, up? man. Good morning. What up, Steve? How you doing, brother? I'm good, bro. How are you? Hey, Steve, I love your show, man. You was the only one. Even though, you know me and you go at it. I'm Cap Boy, too. We go at you it. You know yeah. that. <laughs> you keep it real, brother. And the good thing, like you say, you still got to have hope and believe. Even though you be tearing a bus up. Yeah. You know, we might not agree and disagree, but at least you keep it real. Instead of you making the fans about to all oh, the other no disrespect and they they can do that the, they make the uh, fans want to kill itself and jump off the off the uh, you know you don't do that and the white dude I was listening to his show he was on there with Mark and I saw in his show he said man you guys gotta relax man y'all know because he be turning the Jones up too but I was like damn he's even calm he's like man I'm used to that I've been doing it for six years and we do this every. Why you guys are still panicking? We do it for six years. Chill out. I was like, woo. And he had everybody on this thing. They meet and went down. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I like that, bro. Shout out to your show, man. And I love it. And then you did when you showed me. That's why. You know why I ain't tripping uh, still? You showed me 15 D tackles <laughs> that don't get moved. And they well, Catboy wanted two wanted. Two to three million dollars. <laughs> That's hey, look, I am a little proud when I do that because, you know, I, I try to offer realistic solutions that I think could help the team. That you know what I mean? I, I am proud of that, even though they probably not gonna do a lot of those. Uh but but yeah, man, it, still, it, it wasn't fifteen, but I mean you still, still, I'm gonna tell y'all something. Still okay. don't think they don't be looking, man. You did homework. For uh, a new D coordinator, and he he busted. You see, like I still them fifteen. You know what I'm saying? You that was like, oh man, two to three mil. You think Zim 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 get deal? Come on, bro. Yo, man, you hey, I'm deal. flattered, Marv, that you <laughs> think Mike deal. Zimmer is up in the office right now. Like, hey man, pull up that uh, pull, pull up that Walker yeah. steal. Put, put up, pull up that Walker. He he, he he talking about those defensive tackles. Give me give me one of them. I, I'm pull flattered. And then what he did, and the guy I'm thinking of, because I always wanted him, you get him about seven, eight mil, is my boy that he had from Minnesota and Cleveland. Dahmer. Dahmer. What's his name? Big big D tackle that Minnesota had, 94. And then Dalvin, for Cleveland. Or Dalvin Tomlinson? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Come on, baby. Come I, on. I, think he's, I think he's still in a contract, if my mistake. Is he? Yeah. Well, I know you showed the Buffalo guy, New England guy. You showed some of the guys. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, my God. A lot of defense. You, you're right. You, uh, in oh, fact, you're right. I did. When we did our trade thing, it was like three, two DTs. And then, it, yeah, I showed about five or six guys. You're right. You're right. Man, I say, like, man, I'm still going to be. And then I'm going to watch the tape. You made me go watch the I said, oh, yeah, they're not getting moved. Oh, yeah. This, oh. Uh, the scheme that they play, Cowboy fan, they don't play that hero ball. Mm-mm. Trying Ooh. to get sacked. No, sir. Because he would cuss your ass out yep. if you don't be in that. Yeah. Because you mess up his linebackers. He make his linebackers get 100 tackles that we never had. No, no. You you you, you spot on right there, Marv. The, 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 the whole hero ball, you know, let's go eat and all that stuff, man, is it, going to be about setting up the table for others. And Thank um, you. I think that, obviously, that that's a that's a good way to do it, you know. And it I don't think it's going to take long. I don't think it's going to take long to – coach out what they were taught under Dan or, or AD uh, oh because Thank you got to prove, you got a guy who can come in there and, and just one quick Google search for these young bucks that don't know who Zimmer is. Oh, he know what he doing, right? And, and it, it's not going to take Thank long you. to give him respect, I think. If, if y'all think these boys ain't hungry because they got to feed their families, and guess what they just did, y'all? And still, you know, I'm about to say, that's why I was mad at Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn, y'all. <laughs> With favoritism, his boys. Favoritism is crazy. And then he, uh, 93, Fioco, used to, was getting 10 sacks a year at his college. You couldn't move him at, 
You couldn't get past him on DN. The guy like 265, 270. Dan Quinn trying to make the guy weigh 290, trying to make Colson weigh 290. And they're real DNs that you can't move, that hey. the Cowboys used to play with. And even when we when our defense, when mm. we didn't have good teams, but we had good defense. They're my DNs. Now they get to go back to DNs, get to try to play like they foes to, and try, you know, get another contract for their family. Now they they hungry. I guarantee you they happy. Dan Quinn ass is out of here. Hey, trying trying to make me trying to trying to make me and you play linebacker, Come and on. we weigh two hundred pounds. Come on, get the hell out of here, man. Talk to him, Mar. Now you got a linebacker. Everybody, hey, and and like you say, uh, Zimmer probably say, man, mm, get me out of that boy. That boy gonna help your whole defense. Now number six. Get to play all pro safety. 20, 28, get to play like he came out of college. He was a top five pick. We acting like these guys can't play. Man, now you got to go get more D, get your D tackle room, and they're going to drop another linebacker. It's going to help your corners. It's going to help 26 play his position the right way. And number, number uh, seven, I already know how to play that D, uh, defense because he played at Alabama. Mm. Y'all don't see what I'm seeing. No, that, ooh, we, ooh. Ooh, I'm so excited. I ooh. am so – oh, my God. I am excited. Mar, and then ne- – Hey, Mar fired up, man. Go go, go ahead. Hey, look, Mar, this is what I'm going to let you do, man. I'm, 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 I'm going to do this, bro. I'm going to do this. Let him cook now. Let him cook. I'm going to you cook. I said let Thank you, sir. I appreciate cook. it. I'm just so excited to call it, man. Because they're going to drop the middle line, bro. And y'all, shout out to the, the, the fan base. Because y'all was crying, and they heard that cry, and Cowboy didn't want to get no, uh, what you call that, water thrown on him when he walked into the crowd. Let me, 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 ask, let me ask you about this, Marv. Uh-huh. They, so, so Washington, they got all the money. They signing all these people and whatnot. How about this? Dan Quinn, I don't even know if Dan Quinn got a, a permanent residence in Washington yet, but he already out there signing actual linebackers, right? So he, he yeah. brought he brought in Wagner. Sign Frankie Lavu, and I know you, you, you Catboy two point bro. But I, I, I gotta say it, Marv. I feel like, and I apologize. I gotta apologize to Dan, by the way. I wanted to, to say that. I, I'm sorry, Dan. Clearly, Catboy and them is the reason why you ain't getting no linebackers. I, because it, he over there signing real linebackers. Well, they got they got ninety million. So, but I, but, man, but, but but but. Yeah. I ain't going to get mad at that. He pissed me off. Like I said, I was in that camp. I saw Ridgeway balling. I saw uh, Harper balling. And he tried to put them guys on the practice guard, slipper. And as soon as he put them on the system, that's all. Get that Harper. Get all. Uh, you see what I'm saying? And I said, what the hell are they doing? And he kept sorry, 96. Thank God. Stay in Miami. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Neville good. Gallimore, if y'all don't know, Neville Gallimore is signed with the Thank Miami you, Dolphins. Go. Yeah, you're about it. Get, get your sorry ass over there. Could never God get no more. pass rush and just get bullied by one person. Thank God he's gone. And then you let all our big dogs go. And then that's when I had to make that trade to get Big Hank because it's all, man, we messed up. No. Dan Quinn. In closing, was Marvin. In, in, in closing. In closing, Dan Quinn was more favorite to his. Then, what's called? Because he thought he was going to get the job here. He thought his boy was going to get fired. The boy. Detroit coach, that's who's going to be our next coach. Is What's the Detroit offensive coordinator? Ben Johnson. That's who's going to be the coach. Boy, that'd be, that'd be coach. something, bro. That's the next coach, y'all. That's why he turned it down. Because if McCarthy don't do like he's supposed to, he's that's our new coach. I don't know, bro. I, you know, who was I? Forget one of the callers called in. I, I, I might be coming on his side here. You know, I, I think Jerry Jones and them might favor Tiz with Mike Zimmer. You know, if this thing, hey, hey, yeah, hey, if I'm, just, get Mike Zimmer, I'm gonna be happy too. Oh hell! But I rather if they get Ben. But if they win the chip, if they if they go out. You know, they finally do like they're supposed to because we not do in free agency. I, I don't know. I just hope we get a good coach. 
Uh, if, 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 uh, if McCarthy uh, yeah. don't do, because McCarthy got the weapons, if, he if, has no excuse. If who? My bad. I don't want to hurt no I, you, 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 uh, cut out. If who? I said McCarthy. Mike oh. McCarthy. He oh. has the weapons. He just got to call better play calling. He do. He do. And don't panic. He do. Come he on, do. man. He do, man. Hey, Mar, I appreciate you, dog. I'm Thank calling you, in this morning, man. Good show, man. And I'm glad you're keeping the uh, Cowboy Nation. You know. Keeping them from panic and jumping off the bridges. Thank you, brother. <laughs> no problem, man. It's, that's Magic City, man. I, I think I think next week we we gonna get uh what did we call him last year for draft season? Um, come on, y'all help me out. What did we call Marv with his draft season? Uh, it, it was one of those draft analysts. We get Magic City Marv outside of draft season, during draft season. Um, Professor, o, what do we call him, man? Marv call from a, ro a rotary phone. <laughs> his intro is 20. Yeah, his intro is 20. It, 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 you know, but hey, look, he was saying some things right here. Marv Kuyper, is that what it was? It was something along those lines. Sometimes, though, man, you just gotta, just gotta let him cook. You know this about to be my new job now. Definitely about to be my new job. Let me see. Do I, do, do I got it already in the, in the queue? Nah, Let him cook. Let him cook now. Let him cook. I said, Let him cook. Marv, that's your new intro, dog. <laughs> All right, let's talk to y'all. Uh, what do we call him? Day three, Danny and Marv Kuyper Jr. That's what it was. Marv Kuyper Jr. Let's get some super chats up in there. Yeah, Al. Listen, I'm all I'm all for double dipping that offensive line, Al. At this point, we got a ways to go. All right, super chats. Super chat. Where we at here? Boom! Wow! Wow! Okay, I see y'all appreciate you. Still, them boys dropped five and said possible Cowboy criteria signings: Chase Young and Isaiah Simmons. Oh, the the, the, the other guy in the chat going love to Isaiah Simmons, which. He's a free agent now, and yeah, I mean, if he if he fits the Cowboy criteria, which he may, shit, bring him on in. Uh, former top 10 draft picks you can get for the low. Now, Chase Young. I saw the intro, uh, Devin. I saw the intro where Sasha came out, but I didn't watch. Chase, I don't know if he fits Cowboy criteria because I don't know if he's going to be that cheap still, them boys. You got to understand. The, the main factor in the Catboy criteria, and shouts out to my man D'Lo on Twitter. He said, hey, man, can you stop calling me out? I was like, why? What happened? It, it, it's not a derogatory term, dog. It, it is what it is, and we got to have some fun with it. The main thing of the CBC, Catboy criteria, is the cheapness, is the cost. And I don't, I just, I don't, I don't feel like Chase Young's going to come in under $3 million, $4 million. And I don't think they're going to rise up to some seven, eight, nine million. And, and look, I don't even know if Chase is going to sign for seven, eight. He may sign for more. The, the hope is for guys like Nacho that bring up DJ Reader, the guys like uh, still the boys that bring up Chase Young. Here, here's your hope. The hope is they look at the cap going stupid, right? And they, those guys are young enough. Reader's young enough-ish. Chase is really young. And you say, you know what? I'll pull a uh, Jadavion Clown, right? Cap's going to go up $20, $30 million again next year. I'll play on a cheap deal this year, ball out, and then get the bag next year. That's the hope. If if, if they have that mindset, then, then you can start throwing in these DJ readers and Chase Young. I just, I don't know if they got that mindset yet. So. Cedric Wilson, I'd love to have said back on this team. Um, Y'all know how I feel about the receiver position. Yeah, there's a whole, there's a lot of them in the draft, man. I, I'm definitely the more and more you dig into the receiver position, the more and more I'm like, why are we panicking at 24 to take a receiver? I, I'm I'm chilling, right? And you can say, well, you don't want to, hey, you can't window dress your boy. You got, you don't want to draft for need. Well, then put yourself in position not to draft for need. How about that? That's the thing we we always talk about. Hey, we don't want to draft for need. I didn't. Do things so you don't. At this current moment, 
you ain't got a center or a left tackle i'm sorry those things are way more important than a wide receiver well you we say well sky tyler smith left tackle do we know if he's gonna do that we don't know some people are too comfortable with with a, a ton of question marks heading into the draft that doesn't make me comfortable in the lame duck season mm -mm. i don't even think they know how to do that captain uh jet i'm just gonna call you jet d uh jd i'm not sure how to pronounce the last name i butcher them all the time apologies but thank you for the super chats he dropped two of them super chat he says skywalker always brings the game thank you man appreciate that and then the other one was i've got a lot of hope for this season it's not i'm guessing you october yet so maybe you know me over it's not october or october yet yeah this is the season of hope 100 percent. because you can't be proven right or wrong right now it's the season of hope there's a lot of hopium that that, that that can be pushed, packaged, stepped on, cross that bridge and raise the price. That's a, there was a bridge in my, anyway. So yeah, yeah, this is the season of hope, man. And I'm not here to destroy it. I'm just trying to keep it to being as much as possible. Dro dropped two. Super chat. Dro said, uh, looking like 11 and six fight for a wild card spot really early bro really early y'all know me about 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 records but how to schedule line up you know what i'm saying it's a lot with free agency left draft a whole lot to go but it's, at the end of the day you still have a, a top heavy squad you still got a, a bunch of really damn good players that should at least will you to competitiveness um we'll see how the rest of it plays out a long way to go but the wild card spot though I, I i can see that i can see where that's there's some validity in that and then you also got history you're fighting against history is crazy for the nfc's there's been no repeat winner where when it looked like the eagles are going to be the first repeat winner since the eagles did it in 0405 or whatever it was 20 years there hasn't been a repeat winner and I was thinking about, I don't want to bring this up because it's, it's not it's not a fun thing. But I was thinking about Cowboys' actual playoff victories. I mean, I shouldn't even bring it up. It's just going to really, you talk about Hopium. That ain't no Hopium, but I'm already here. In numbers, right? Shouts out to Koye. We always look at patterns and numbers and whatnot. There's like a four or five year span between playoff victories. Post-95. Remember, we went like 13 years, no playoff victory. You got your dub in 09. Then get your next dub to 2014. Then get your next dub to 2018. Then get your next dub to 2022. The pattern says your next dub ain't coming to like 2026. <laughs> that's the pattern now hopefully we break it so you got that history you're fighting you got the nfc east history you're fighting this is some nasty history you're fighting against right now man and i know they have nothing to do with 2024 it's just eh. super chat shouts out to you aa ron drop the dub and let me go ahead and refresh this in case there's some more that came through and i missed he said, Sky, the talk of .com yesterday was Cowboys can't restructure because all contracts coming in coming to a head in 2025. Looking at Spro Chat, uh, says a different story. I need this in the low cash spending question question asked to no C. Um, no C is one of the best in the business at this. Uh, we okay, all right. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow. I'm and I know what we're going to talk about tomorrow, uh, but maybe I'll bring this up as well. What I want to do, I want to get, I want to get. Um, Joey Ike's on. Joey Ike's actually is a like a financier in real life, and he understands a cap. So does KD. KD is a master at this. Uh, I, every year, I'm always looking for his cap articles and learn more about it. I'm I'm a uh, explain it to you like you and I are five cap guy. I understand it. I can explain it, but the 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 devil or the devil is in the details, and those guys are amazing at it. So. Um, I know what you're talking about in regards to 2025. You go look at the spot track. There's, there's should be a ton of room, especially 
I don't understand why they say they can't restructure. Um, so restructure would indicate you are pushing money down. So I was thinking about extending. If you extend some of your top guys, like obviously Dak and, and uh, CD, you can push their money beyond 2025. Maybe they're looking at restructure. Diggs is going to raise his 2025 cap. Steel is 2025 cap or whatever. But you already did it with Zach. So I don't know, man. Maybe Look, I'm not trying to AA Ron. I don't know what they said. I have to go listen. I don't I don't get this whole well we can't restructure cuz 2025 is coming to it. I have seen the uh the, the fear mongering amongst that. I saw my gosh, that's not the Nick, but Nick was like uh oh, if y'all think it's bad now, wait to 2025 cap and I'm like hmm? Maybe I got to go study this 2025 cap more and why is why is 2025 such some crazy situation if you extend your quarterback and, and, and your your wide receiver here well if you don't extend your receiver he ain't gonna be here next year uh you you extend michael parsons going to the 2025 this is this is nothing but if they elect to do none of those then cd lamb is out of here next year unless they franchise can't franchise that yeah franchise that and that messes your cap up more if they don't do anything with micah he's gonna count 20 million next year and then if they just say move on from Dak, he's gonna so maybe that's what they're saying if they want to blow this thing up and not touch any of these guys, then yeah, it's going to be weird on the cap next year. But why wouldn't you? And I say what I've been saying for months and years. I don't trust these dudes to blow it up anyway. I don't trust them to have $100 million in cap space and go out there and spend it on premium talent. It's not the MO. It's not damn well. All right, what y'all talking about here? <laughs> Can someone please tell me what all these Trey Lance guys are seeing from him uh, that I don't see? Potential. Potential is a uh, it's a scary thing, but it's 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 kind of the blood of a lot of these type of players. That's why they continue to keep circulating around the league. They see potential. They see the 6'4". They see they see a strong one. But if you really go watch Trey, the mechanics, you can tell it messes up his, his delivery. Dude does not have a pretty ball at all. He doesn't have a good ball. I think maybe now he does. But he didn't have a good ball when I was watching him last year. Uh, he can move. He's young. Top five pick. That's what they see um, is the potential. We act like the A's. Yeah. Money ball. I agree, C. C Jordan. The cap is going to go up in 2025, but we, we're talking about the Cowboys organization that I think will use anything to say, ah, we can't, y'all. The cap. You know. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talks. Here comes the money. Look, we can't do X, Y, Z. The, the, the bottom line is you can. You can be aggressive. And if it fails, you can get out of it. There is there, there's so many teams that have proven that to you. And I'm not going to be one of those people that say it's not it's not it's not completely real. Like there, there it's it's a lot of it's a smokescreen more than it's just not real. Like there's something to the cap, obviously, but there's nothing about the cap that holds you back from doing what you want to do in free agency or signing your own guys. It's just not. Think about it. One more thing on this cap stuff, okay? Because it gets boring to talk about. But one more thing about this. And, and I almost I almost put together a segment on this just to see how much money we quote unquote wasted. But let's just talk about these three players. Dalton Schultz, Tony Pollard, and Michael Gallup. I'm not ready to say Terrence yet, right? But Michael Gallup. Those three guys took up roughly 30 plus million dollars. In, in cap space. I'm not talking about cash because the Cowboys don't spend cash in cap space. Let me calm down because I don't want to go on a tangent here. But Stephen Jones, what he's going to tell you is, huh, man, you draft good, you sign your guys, man, that's, all, that's what we want to... You don't have to do that if those guys don't move the needle like that. Dalton Schultz doesn't move the needle like that. Wasted $10 million. Love you, TP, but as... 
if you weren't going to tandem this dude off a broken leg, a waste, why would you do that? He doesn't move the needle like that. Michael Gallup after an ACL, $60 million contract, $30 million, whatever it was. It's a, it's a waste. So you take that $30 million in a two-year span, that they, a two-and-a-half-year span, whatever it was, that they used, and say you roll that into free agency. Oh, things, are, things could be a little different, huh? Maybe you can go get Daniil Hunter. By the way, I mean, shouts out to the Texans. Whew, having a hell of offseason. But maybe you can go get one of those premium dudes. No one ever talks about because this this is this is this is me. I've been saying this is 2019 that came on, on here. It was never, ever, ever, ever about Jerry spending ridiculous in free agency. Never. It was about him committing ridiculously to his guys. Roy Williams gets the big contract. Ken Hamlin, Marion Barber, you know? Jay Ratliff start to break down. He gets the big contract. No offense, Zeke. Michael Gallup. Tagging Anthony Spencer a bunch of times. Dalton Schultz, Tony Pollard. No one talks about what they're actually using it on. Hey, it's okay to let TP or, or Dalton Schultz walk. Well, it's okay to let Michael Gallup walk. One on a tangent anyway, man. So, I don't buy it. I, I never bought it. Y'all don't buy it either. But when, when people bring up this nonsense, just, just shift it and say, well, what about the people they actually paying here? But if they didn't, Jalen Smith, you know, that's another one. You know, he's on a bionic knee. And I get it. You can say, well, Sky, that's hindsight, right? But but not really. What the hell are you paying, Marion Barber? Dude, and rest in peace to the guy. But, dog, he, his style is he's not going to be the same. You paid a record-setting contract to another runner. You should have learned your lesson. Knee injuries. Above average tight end. Like, whatever, man. I digress. Any more super chats? My bad. I don't I don't want I don't went on it anyway. I hear you toxic. I'm just looking for the lightning in the bottle, man. <laughs> looking for a lightning in the bottle. Uh good stuff today. I appreciate y'all. We we got through we got through it today without even having to attack what I want to talk about tomorrow, and we will. I got some options for y'all at the other position they're interested in. We'll keep our ears to the ground and plugged on what the Cowboys may or may not do uh, today or tomorrow in free agency. Um, if, if it were me, I'm looking at somebody asked me this yesterday. Shout out to my guy, I forget who it was. Hey, what do you think? Where they attack next? Running back, defense, a tackle, and I still think corner. Uh, they can't ignore that. But give me Tyron Smith, get me Stephon Gilmore, and unfortunately, I gotta live with that. You know, I just live with it. I just live with it. With that said, please on your way out if you enjoyed today's show, or if you just enjoyed them signing Eric Kendricks, hit that like button, man. Come on, come on. Also. We uh, here in the family are essentially kind of on a day-to-day -day operation. So do know that. <laughs> I will keep y'all posted as best I can. But if you see an absence, you know why. So bit day-to-day, -day, not necessarily week-to-week -week according to what the doc says. So we day-to-day, -day. Uh, potentially. Yeah. Mo will be on later, final show of the week, and then tomorrow... Patrick Nosey Walker will be joining me and we'll be discussing this signing potential, maybe today, tomorrow morning, other signings. And if not, some guys we have our eyes on. Uh, and maybe I open up a mailbag. We'll see. We'll see. With that said, Bomb Squad, appreciate y'all as always. Good stuff today. Let me go ahead and hit this button and get up out of there. Push the goddamn button. Push the goddamn button. Yeah, we close, man. And wifey's doing fantastic. Could be more more proud of her and how she's she's carrying and handling this thing. But uh, 
close. So if y'all see me coming on here with bigger bags, falling asleep, just 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 deal with it. I promise y'all, I'll get used to it. <laughs> Love y'all. We out of here. Peace. Actually, I lied to y'all. <laughs> I forgot to talk about this today. And before we go, please, please, please come on back. Everybody come on back. We are not done just quite yet. I got to talk to y'all about this before we get up out of here. If you're still around, come on back in. I want to tell y'all about our Survivor Madness Challenge that I forgot to talk about before we get up out of here. And listen, this is important because it, 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 it's, it's a way that you can win some... Uh, here comes the money. Here we go. <laughs> money talks. Here comes the money. If you watch college basketball, please, please stick around and listen to this, okay? If you like to do the March Madness brackets, please, please, please stick around. Cowboys Nation to listen to this for two minutes. Two minutes. I don't watch college basketball like I used to, but I like to win money. Here comes the money. Here we go. And I know a lot of y'all like to win money, too. A lot of y'all like to bet. Sports bet. And y'all play this Survivor Challenge with football. Now we're bringing it to college basketball. Okay? I want y'all to play with us. A to Z all the way through the tournament with our new Survivor Madness Challenge on Splash Sports. Okay? The winner gets a massive cash prize. All you got to do, very easy, sign up for our challenge on Splash with our link splashsports.com slash A-T-O-Z. It's a $10 entry fee. One ten dollars All of the pot goes to the winner of the Survivor Madness Challenge. All of it. Not a little bit. Not all of it. Then you pick one college basketball team to win each day of the tournament. If that team survived, you advance. But you can only pick one team. Y'all know how the Survivor Challenge works, right? You can only pick one team. The more people who play, the bigger the pot is, and the winner could take home upwards of $5,000. Come on, man. But you got to sign up, splashsports.com slash A-T-O-Z. It's available for Cowboy fans across the country, minus a select few states, okay? Now, we can go. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all for coming back. pay the bills man I'd be so caught up in the work y'all stuck around though y'all the best thank you splashsports.com slash A-T-O-Z get that bag man get that bag here comes the money here we go